I'd like to call to order. This is the uh, 25th regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council, also <coughs> known as the first to last meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council. As is customary, uh, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. Thank you, Sue. Uh, roll call, please. Born. Excused. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Excused. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Excused. Surik. Excused. Vanderweel. Here. Vu. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Eleven present. We have a quorum. Uh, now, if uh, Alderperson Kittleson will please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jean. We have a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public forum. Okay. Uh, first this evening we have Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up to the mic, please. And Dulcie, may I have your home address? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Is this on? Yes. yes. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, members of the council and citizens. My reason for speaking tonight is a story in the Sheboygan Press on Wednesday, March 17th, which reads, Fire Chief Herman said that about 12 city jobs are funded by ambulance revenues. <coughs> I call that a taxpayer's dream. The marginal profit for the ambulance service for 2008 was $406,188. Those revenues can only be spent once. And $406,188 divided by 12 is $33,849. How many City of Sheboygan employees earn only $33,849 in salaries and benefits? The marginal profit for the ambulance service for 2009 was $280,000. Again, those revenues can only be spent once. And $280,000 divided by 12 is $23,333. How many city employees earn only $23,333 in salaries and benefits? That would be a taxpayer's dream. <clears throat> Now, if you add the two years of marginal profit together, you could fund 12 employees at $57,181. But costs and revenues are accounted for on a calendar year basis. Revenues can only be spent once, and city employees are paid every two weeks, not every two years. <clears throat> Chief Herman also said there's going to be a big hole in the general fund if they decide to shut the ambulance service down. If the council had approved lifting the hiring freeze and hiring three firefighter paramedics to be able to continue the ambulance service, which was Chief Herman's request, and the $180,000 in salaries and benefits of those three hires were charged to the ambulance service, as the finance director said they would be, a marginal profit of $280,000 would be reduced to $100,000, which would not fund 12 city jobs. Further, I have learned that the Firemen's Union has negotiated a 4% salary increase for 2011 and a 2% premium for firefighter paramedics for a total increase of 6%, which will further reduce the marginal profit. It is a given that the firemen and the paramedics don't have enough to do. The, matter of their, the nature of their work is waiting for a fire or ambulance call. And every time the department hires another firefighter or paramedic or firefighter paramedic, they hire one more person with not enough to do. The fire department's primary responsibility is fighting fires and should be the primary focus of the personnel in the department. 
The department must have adequate staff to provide fire protection, but it is not necessary to provide ambulance services. There was no need for the department to assume this service. The council was right to deny Chief Herman's request to lift the hiring freeze and not hire three more personnel for the ambulance <coughs> service. If the department cannot staff the fire stations and ambulances within their allotted budget, they need to reconsider the ambulance service to avoid large overtime expenses. As I understand it, overtime costs have become an issue because it is necessary to call in firefighters at times to adequately staff the ambulance service. It makes no sense to say that the ambulance service is making a marginal profit of $280,000 if it means expending large amounts from the department's budget for <coughs> overtime for firefighters. <clears throat> Further, the cost of each hire to the taxpayer does not stop when they retire. Taxpayers are required to support retirement pay for 20 to 30 years for employees who do not have enough to do while employed. Taxpayers pay 100% of a city employee's retirement. There is no employee contribution. <clears throat> Chief Herman now realizes that he needs to take one ambulance out of service. Per tonight's agenda, Chief Herman's request is being referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee of the new council, which will mean that the council will probably not be voting on it until mid-May. Vacations will have begun by then, resulting in the overtime costs which Chief Herman was trying to avoid. It behooves the council to ensure that the fire department can adequately respond to fire calls. It also behooves the council to provide this protection as efficiently as possible. To do this without incurring excessive overtime costs, it will be necessary to re-evaluate the ambulance service and the manpower required to operate this service. I look forward to hearing the five scenarios that the finance director is preparing. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you, Dulcie. Next. Next on the list will be James Reinel. James, if you could come up to the front, please. Jim, you may want to pull the microphone down just a little bit so that everybody can hear you. Are you implying that I'm short? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I need your home address. Home address is 512 South Water. My name is Jim Reinel. And uh, I've been living there since 83. Well, that doesn't have much to do with this. But what I'm here for is that sweeper that comes through our streets. He's got brushes on there, and he's always in the middle of the street. He can't get to the sides because there's cars parked there. Now, um, this year, I noticed both sides of the streets still had leaves in from fall. Uh, I don't know, I, I figured that the only way a person could get by with getting these cars moved, where I live, uh, there's, uh, what have I got the list here? Uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, residences, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, 17 residences and uh, from Water Street, at which it's just three blocks long, and there's only, uh, eight driveways, and there's approximately, well, let's see, I figure there's 29 families that live there. And we've got a problem with parking all the time. So what I suggest is why doesn't that, we have for one week, everybody flip-flops like they do in winter. They park on one side and then the other side. One day on one side, one on the other side. I don't like this parking in winter neither, does everybody else, but it works real good. Ever since they had that, our snow plowing has been excellent. So this is what I, that's what I came up here for. I, I tried to, I called one all the times, never even called me back. I finally go, got a hold of Mr. View and he came over to the house. So I want to give him credit for that. I've been trying to get this done for a while. Now the other thing is, in regard to the flip-flop parking, if they could uh, uh, stop the flip-flop parking uh, when uh, daylight saving time comes, like in the middle of March, that would be I think that'd be a lot better for us. We gained two weeks and we'll take it. They did it once a year. In, two, in 2008, they did cut it out on daylight saving times instead of April 1st. Daylight saving time comes about the middle of August. And uh, we'd appreciate if they look at that. I didn't think I had to come up here and speak about all this. I thought I could talk to my alderman, but um, that's why I'm here. 
just to see if we can get something done about that. Let's see what else is there. I guess I got everything here. Okay, that's about it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. And uh, we will have uh, uh, your matter referred to the Public Works Committee. It can be discussed in the new, new Public Works Committee of the new council. Okay, that's all for public work? That's it. Okay, uh, next we have the, uh, the mayor's announcements, which is always my favorite part of the day. Uh, thanks to uh, Alder person uh, Jean Clyunas, who's a good Catholic on our council. Uh, we are now going to know this as the mayor's time to pontificate. So thank you, Jean. Uh, the mayor can say whatever he wants and uh, can't get in any trouble for it. So I thank you for that, Jean. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was just a joke, and I thank Jean for that. She dropped it off at my office uh, last week. Um, Mayor's announcements. Uh, all of the uh, aldermen uh, have on your desks, all returning aldermen, uh, what I commonly refer to as the wish list. Uh, this has uh, uh, to list in, uh, in your order of preference standing committees that you would like to be assigned to. Uh, this will also go out to the aldermen elect. Um, and also all of the other committees that uh, require uh, aldermen on them. And if you can uh, uh, please let me know your preferences. I can't promise everybody everything, obviously, but I would like to know what uh, committees people would like to serve on. Same thing that I did uh, last year. So I'll try to, try to keep, uh, keep everybody as happy as we possibly can in a uh, uh, government such as ours. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about, which uh, I thank uh, Dulcie Johnson for speaking on uh, the fire department and uh, one of their primary duties is being uh, is uh, fire protection and fire suppression. That's what they do. Um, I know that uh, on the council, and this is my time to pontificate, so I can say this. Um, on our council, we've had uh, some questions about uh, is our fire department overstaffed and do we have too many firehouses? Do we have too many firemen? Uh, and there's been some comparisons to West Bend. And that West Bend covers uh, 40 square miles, and uh, they have uh, half the firemen that we do. And they use a uh, uh, partial, par partial full-time and partial part-time fire department or something of the sort. Well, it just so happens that uh, um, last week uh, there was a fire in West Bend and a fire in Sheboygan. These fires started in an apartment in a building uh, that was the exact same footprint. It was the exact same building in West Bend as Sheboygan. Um, the particular building in Sheboygan up on Calumet Drive, um, the assessed value on this property is $724,000. That's the property tax assessed value. Um, the fire department arrived. The fire started approximately the same time of the day, during the day. Uh, fire department arrived, got the fire under control. Uh, the major damage was the unit that the fire started in the apartment unit that the fire started in. There's 24 units in these, in these, both of these buildings. Um, in West Bend, uh, the fire started also on the same floor, in the same building, exact same style. Uh, that building burnt to the ground. So that's when we have to look at what does the fire department do. Uh, the building in Sheboygan, they, uh, they estimate within two to three months it will be free of smoke and every, all the residents will be able to move back in. It will stay on the tax rolls. The building in West Bend is a total loss. So that's what we have to look at and that is my pontification for the day. I thank you. Uh, Alderman Bowers is now is not the time to come up. May I speak please? No? No. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have uh, hearings. We have uh, four hearings. Uh, these are hearings for the proposed assessments for the calendar year 2009 against all benefited property in park Parking Assessment District 1. Uh, second hearing in Parking Assessment District 2. Third hearing in Parking Assessment District 4. And the fourth hearing in Parking Assessment District 5. Um, would anybody wish to be heard regarding these hearings? Mr. Wachowski, can you step up, please? Mr. Wachowski, can you give me your home address, please? Ed Wachowski, 
2632 North 8th Street. Okay. I'm sure none of you are surprised on the council that I'm here tonight to speak. But I was very surprised, very surprised at the quote this evening because I feel like that someone, and I certainly feel like he, as part of your quote. The special assessment for the parking um, authority is allowed by law, but it is assumed in that law that the expenses for the parking authority and the revenues are reviewed by the Transit and Parking Commission to ensure that any assessment that is placed on any business is proper and true, and above all, need it. You already have my two documents questioning whether or not the Transit Commission and Parking Commission is following the law. To give a blank check to the Transit and, and Parking Commission to assess any properties without knowing whether or not the assessment is needed, the amount of money that is going to be assessed to these properties are appropriate, what the expenses are regarding the parking assessment districts is also very important. You would think and assume that each one of those questions would be answered to the parking and transit utility prior to the time it comes to you. If you review the agendas and the minutes of the parking and transit authority, you will note that this item this year did not appear and has not been approved or reviewed by the Parking and Transit Commission. I ask you not to approve this assessment to refer it back to the Parking and Transit Commission and to report back to, to review, first of all, is it really needed or necessary, and to report back to you some facts and figures regarding their request to you to approve this assessment on the businesses within these parking districts. You want to improve and bring businesses into the community, yet you're, not, you're going to assess these properties, which may or may not be appropriate. And you already have my booklets, okay, on the other items. I'm asking that you do not approve this tonight, but you refer it back because it has not been reviewed and has not been properly approved by the Parking and Transit Authority. I thank you very much for listening to me, and I'm sorry that I have to be here tonight to even testify to this, because there's a lot of other things I'd rather be doing. But again, I feel like that's someone, and I certainly am that he. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Uh, do you have any comments on that attorney McLean as far as referring back? Uh, um, thank you, Ron. I'm just looking at the, uh, the ordinance section on uh, the Parking Assessment District Number One, and uh, the others are pretty similar. The uh, the role of the Parking and Transit Utility is, as I see it in the ordinances, is to determine whether any benefited property located within the Parking Assessment District is entitled to reduction of assessment uh, on the basis of. Uh, there being, uh, they're not needing the parking or they're having their own private parking spaces. That's the only role of the uh, parking and transit utility that I see in here. Uh, all the special assessments are levied by the council. The uh, parking utility does superintend the, uh, the parking lots and uh, keeps the parking facilities in repair. But as far as the authority to assess, that's the council. The council 
makes the determination as to the assessments. Um, and I guess, you know, all I'm saying that the, the parking and transit's role is just to determine whether any property within the district is entitled to a reduction on the basis that there are private parking spaces within the parking assessment district that entitle that <coughs> property to a, a reduction. Uh, the, the methodology of establishing the assessments is set forth in the, uh, in the ordinances and it's, it's uh, pretty clear. It, it's based on generally square footage uh, calculated on a pro rata basis and you take uh, finance department takes the costs, all the costs in the assessment district and, uh, and allocates them. Uh, as far as what the council wants to do with it, if you want to refer it to parking and transit, refer it back to them, I think you could. Uh, you know, not sure exactly what's to be gained, but uh, if you want to do that, I don't see any impediment to doing that. Thank you, Attorney McClick. Alderman Hanna, did you have a question? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, may I ask uh, Attorney McClain a question? Sir. So historically, what we're doing tonight is the way we've done it in the past. The, author the authority to assess is the council's authority. The, the development of what the assessment costs are is done by the finance department and brought forward to the Council, has it ever been run through transit? That, I, I can't answer that. I don't know as a practice whether uh, they've been referred to transit. Uh, I'm not aware that they have. Maybe the, uh, maybe Terry Hansen would know. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if any of the aldermen have been on transit would yeah. could speak to that. Uh, thank you, Alderman. President Gisher. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't. Uh, I understand Mr. Wachowski's questioning of it, but it, uh, I don't believe it's ever been through transit uh, in my time on the Transit Commission. I think I've been on there three years. I think, but it feels, it, feels like a lifetime. It does feel like a lifetime. I'll, actually, uh, older person um, uh, Heidemann has been uh, attending it for me, but uh, and it was like a little gift to him. But the. <laughs> Would you appreciate it? But it's my understanding, Attorney McLean, that even if we referred it back, they have no authority to act on it or do anything about it anyway. We would get the exact same document back. Yeah, the only thing that they could look at is whether or not individuals within the parking assessment district have their own private parking spaces right. that entitle them to a reduction of the assessment. But these documents and hear these hearings tonight don't relate to that at all. It just, it's just setting the normal calculation for assessment. That's my understanding. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President Gisha, Alderman Hanna. Second time? Yeah, I'll, I'll, this is, I'll stop this. It's just one, one question, and that's, uh, I mean, the public hearing is the time which I would think people would come forward and, say, and, and seek a reduction. And, and, and this is exactly what we're holding, is a public hearing so we have that information to act. And if somebody comes forward, we refer it back to, to transit so that they can make that adjustment. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. I believe that uh, the Director of Development, Paula Enders, has a word to say. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can just clarify what the internal process is. I know that um, the Deputy Director of Finance and Treasurer um, does work on those assessment amounts based on these formula that's, set, that's um, defined in each one of the districts. And then in our office, um, she works with Ron French, um, who then verifies some of the uses in the district. Um, to make those calculations. And then there have been some issues with individuals that say, well, I have my own parking, and they maybe received uh, an assessment in the past, and those issues are clarified as they arise. And so I, I think you're correct that if, you know, and if there are any issues, they typically do bring them forward even before the public hearing. Thank, Thank you, you, Paulette. Uh, Alderman Bowers? Thank you, Mayor. I 
the only question I have is, is the proposed assessments for the calendar year 2009, this is 2010, so is this a carryover from last year for the assessments for this year, 2010? Yeah, it's, 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 it's built in arrears. Oh, oh, I see. So we will be billing them for 2009 now. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Good. Uh, Attorney McLean. You know, the, the biggest bulk of those assessments is the maintenance. And typically, uh, my recollection over the years has been where you get uh, people that are benefited in the parking assessment districts having questions is when it's a bad snow year and there was a lot of plowing, and that raises the costs in the assessment districts pretty substantially. And I don't think this winter was that bad, so I don't know what the numbers are. I, I shouldn't speak to that, but uh, uh, that's a big driver of what the assessments are is based on snow plowing. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. As a member of the Transit Commission as well, just to reiterate here um, th that it is uh, published in the newspaper that these hearings will be held and personal notices are sent to each of those businesses. So if they did have an issue, that, that they would be sure to be here this evening. So everything, I think uh, they've been communicated too, so they do know these hearings are being held. So I just wanted to make that clear too. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Okay, our board is not lit up. Is there anybody else that would be like that would like to be heard in this public hearing, sir? Mike Reinbold from Novak Ram Ziegler Funeral Home, located at fifteen thirty-five South Twelfth Street. It, uh, it, which funeral home? I'm sorry. Novak. Oh, Novak. Ram okay. Ziegler. And your Reinbold is it? Reinbold. Oh, Reinbold. It's R E I N B O L D. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead. I guess my only concern was, um, as you talked about, it's for the maintenance and operation. Totally understand that. We're a, bet, we're a, bet, a business that truly does benefit from those parking areas. Um, I guess my only concern is that um, I don't know how it's contracted out um, as far as the plowing and maintenance goes. I just want to make sure that that's done in the most efficient and effective way anyway to keep those costs down as much as possible. But there's no doubt that, like I say, our benefit uh, of those parking lots is, is wonderful. But I just want to make sure that that's taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else that would like to be heard? Second time, is there anybody else that would like to be heard regarding this issue? And for the third time, is there anyone who wishes to be heard? President Gisha. I move that the hearings be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. Any discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearings are closed. I thank everybody. On to the consent agenda. Regarding 25.1 through 25.36, President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderperson Clyunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question about 2534, which is um, from Public Works recommending filing resolution empowering its citizens, property owners with the ability, responsibility of trimming trees on a city owned trimming of city-owned trees. Um, so we're not going to... Yeah. All the person I, I just confused on it a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Um, we, did, we did recommend that this resolution be, it was, uh, we do have the ordinance in place. Um, we approved it, our public works committee did, uh, but Director Bittner will be putting a guideline together so that citizens will have instruction as to how to go about so that when they do inquire about it there will be a guideline so that they will have uh, you know knowledge of how they can go about trimming the trees they will be informed by public works director Bittner is coming forward with that information That's so everybody yeah. doesn't trim all the branches it, to save the it, leaf raking exactly exactly so that is that is coming some instruction thank you understood question. thank you mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes. Sue um, just a question. Yes. Um, this document, if passed, files the resolution. Yes. 
That's what this document right. does. And that's what but we, filing is not passing the resolution. Well, we don't need to pass. We don't need to. Oh, that's what you want to do. That, right. We already okay. have that in place. All righty. Very good. Right. It's just a matter of educating, of, of tweaking that and bringing out the, uh, the uh, guidelines. Guidelines. So that, yes. Thank so you, Alderman Person Kittleson. Next we have that is Alderman all Hanna. has been on our books since 1968, that the citizens have the right to trim their trees. All they have to do is show up at the Public Works office, uh, sign some paperwork, and then they're allowed to trim their own trees. We would like to give them some guidance so there's some uniformity in the trimming, but we've had this on our books since 68. I had a slow day and looked it up. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, and I will remind everybody we have 100 items on the docket this evening, yeah. and uh, the election's over. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Attorney McLean. Just to amplify what Alderman Hanna is saying, there's a permit process that is in the ordinance. That and a private citizen can get a permit. And the, the reason for the permit is so that private citizen just doesn't go trim the tree in whatever style of, of decoration that they might, uh, <laughs> might wish. And, uh, and what Alderman Kittleson is talking about is that the, uh, the director is working on some guidelines for citizens when they apply for the permits. But I think there had been some uh, uh, misunderstanding, I think, at Public Works Department about citizens' ability to trim the trees. Okay, thank you, Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? If there is none, on um, the consent agenda 25 1 through 25 we have a roll call, please. Bowers? Here, Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Montemayor, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 11 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2537 through 2540 to be referred. Uh, reports of officers 2, 2541 to be referred to finance. That is not uh, marked on here right now. If everybody can make that note, 2541 will be referred to finance. Um, 25, glasses time. We're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to do 2542, 2543, and then if you could pull forward 2565 and 2571, it's all one topic, okay. and there's conflicting recommendations. Uh, can we have a motion for somebody to pull 2565 and 71 forward? Motion in a second. I'm pulling. Twenty-five seventy-two. Terry's got his hand up. Terry, would you like to speak? Come on up. It's our director of finance, Terry Hansen. Um, I believe well, let's it was. Wait till Terry says something. <laughs> okay. Okay. On items forty-one, and then the other item that is in regards to the capital improvement program, that needs to be referred to finance and to planning per our ordinance. So we need a dual referral. Finance and city planning on 2541. And then, then there's another one with a resolution on it later on. I, I don't okay. know that number, but thank you. We'll okay. catch it. Thanks, Terry. Here so that will go. be 2541. We'll go to finance and city planning. Okay. Yeah. Know what the other one is yet? I'll get to it, yeah. We'll find it. Yeah. The numbers are 2542 and 2543 that we're going to be doing, and 65 and 71. 65 and 71. 65. Okay, 2565 is by Alder Person right. Kittleson, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the purchase of energy efficient light. Oh. No, 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 no. No, no, That's no, why no. I read it. Yeah, that's not it. I have 2572 listed on mine. Committee of the Whole? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, 2572 we're looking to pull forward, which would be by Committee of the Whole recommending referral of communication number 81-09-10 from Edward Wachowski regarding changes in the municipal code entitled Composition, Appointment, Terms, Transit Commission, and General Ordinance Number 
55-09-10, repealing and recreating a section in the code relating to fiscal control of transit commission expenditures so as to conform with current practice. That is 2572. Is there any others? Uh, let's see here. We've got two from transit and we should have two from committee of the whole. Okay, we have uh, 2572. Um, oh. <laughs> Small glitch in the system here today, folks. They are. 72 and... Yes, they're on the same one. You got two documents on one. Oh, okay. So, so 40, 42, 43, and 72. Right. So we need a motion to pull 25, 72 right. forward. And a second. All in favor of pulling it forward, say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay. So we are now taking 25, 72, which I've read. We have 2542 by the Transit Commission recommending filing document um, submitting a communication from Edward Wachowski regarding changes that he would like to see in Section 2 558 of the Municipal Code entitled Composition Appointment Terms Transit Commission. And 2543 by the Transit Commission recommending repealing and recreating Section 2 563 of the Municipal Code relating to fiscal control of Transit Commission expenditures so as to conform with the current practices. Okay, do we have, who would, uh, Transit Commission? Vice President Heideman, have at it. I make a motion that, uh, sorry, thank, you. thank you, Mayor. I make a motion that uh, 2542, 2543, along with 2572, all be referred to the committee, new Committee of the Whole. We have a motion to refer all to the new Committee of the Whole, under discussion. If there is none, roll call, Sue? Um, we don't have to, we can try. Let's, all, all in right. favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, let's roll, roll call, call, please. Okay. All right, Balk, I'm sorry, do you know what we're voting on? No. I do, and I. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're, re we're voting on referring the, all three documents to the Committee of the Whole of the new council. The, all the, tr the ones that Transit did and the one that Committee of the Whole did. Make sense? Yes, I'm not lo I'm looking at Jean. Oh, okay. It just seems like we're rehashing again. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that actually, that was actually the whole. And so the purpose is then, sorry, just to be standing up. Uh, there, let, me, let me get you some sound here, Jean. Yeah. We discussed 2572 at Committee of the Whole, and then we would be sending this uh, 2542 and 2543 back to Committee of the Whole because we don't need, we're going to discuss the same thing again, or are we saying that this is a fuller discussion by sending these back? I don't understand. It's a conflicting, it's a conflicting okay, so just, recommendation, so you've got a referral and you've got a passing. Okay. You've got to decide which one. You okay. do. So we're cleaning house and just trying to well, put them all together in one well, idea. Well, you, you've got to decide which recommendation. Yeah. Okay. And look on the bright side, Jean. It's the new I committee, know, new of, committee the whole. of the whole. I'm real good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, under further discussion, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I guess, I, Attorney McQueen, I, I'd like you, to, could you just, on that second one there, with the municipal code relating to fiscal control of the transit commission expenditures so as to co conform with current practice i mean i thought didn't we we did that correct correct didn't you come forward with some uh with an or didn't we come forward changing or, or doing something that would make the practice that we are uh, allowing right now conforms to the ordinance that's the general ordinance number 550910 okay and are we Anything that is out of the ordinary or that we shouldn't be doing or, or what we're doing illegal or anything like that. I guess that's the question I, I need to know. The answer, I mean. What are we doing? Uh, General Ordinance 550910 uh, mm -hmm. was uh, requested in order to conform, to conform our ordinance to what the current practice is. Correct. 
And are we doing that now? We are doing that. We've conformed um, to what, the, what our ordinance is. We're not currently conforming to the letter of the ordinance. That's, that's why the request was to amend the ordinance to reflect the current practices. Okay. And so we are doing that, though, now? No, we're not. Okay. Uh, you'll be doing that if you adopt if general we adopt ordinance this. number 5509 okay. Thank you. Oh. Here on, Sorry. and you were about to call roll on right. referring these to the new committee of the whole, if I don't recall correctly. It, do you just, do you understand, I understand. what we're going to do now? I understand. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Roll call, please. Okay. Bauk, I got an aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clyunis? <laughs> Boy, that. Aye. Okay, Montemayor. No. Uh, Vanderweel. Aye. Vu? Aye. And Wongman. Aye. 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 25 44 through 25 58 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three 25 59 by Alderman Gisha approving the terms and conditions of the amendment to the Moeller Building ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Moeller Development Company, LLC. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, excuse me, uh, I also believe we need to do a suspension on this, and uh, I would be happy, although in the absence of Alderperson Ryan Flesh, I would still be happy to explain <laughs> the need for suspension. Uh, very good. We have a motion to suspend. Do we have a Second. second. We have a motion and a second to suspend. I apologize. Please. Thank you. I apologize for calling the resolution passage before suspension. The, um, uh, the Mueller building lease is going to kind of expand the space of it, uh, and they're going to be paying additional rent for that additional space. And they're going to be putting in through, um, I think, uh, Restoration Gardens out of Kohler, uh, a, a complete garden, a go-go thing with a lot of flowers, a lot of hanging stuff, well, it should be quite garden-like, and that's what this space is going to do, and the reason we need to do it is so that they can get it in. in what is time. the garden a go-go? Yeah, in, unless that's incorrect, Paulette, I'd say perhaps the a go-go was a little much, but the, uh, <laughs> the general idea. I, don't I was just visualizing something different there with the garden a go-go. That's a good point. That would be, that would be a little further north, but the, <laughs> I, uh, I don't spend a lot of time in garden stores, but it's going to be like that. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you, President Gisha. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. This is just a uh, here again, I notice that there isn't any address, and I think I've addressed this before, but uh, if we, in the, in the future, if we could uh, put addresses on, I'd like to know where this place, I think it's on Michigan Avenue, isn't it? Uh, no, it's on the South Pier. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess that's why I like addresses. Uh, President Gisha, please. Uh, Alderman Bowers, the very last page of your document has not only the address, uh, the township, but uh, the uh, noting that it's on South Pier, but actually has the exact coordinates of the property if you wish to maybe Google it in via satellite. So it, the address is listed in quite detail on the back end. Thank you, President Gisha. Okay, the motion is uh, on the suspension. Does anybody uh, disagree with suspending the rules? If there are no disagreements, the rules are suspended. Now may we have a... Thank you. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. As, thank you. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. 25-6. 60, by Halter Person Clyunas, declaring May 16 through 22 as Bike and Walk to Work Week, in addition to challenging the city of Manitowoc to a non motorized mileage challenge. Halter Person Clyunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to um, amend this uh, to put in the correct dates. But first, I'll put the resolution upon its passage, mm -hmm. and then to amend it. Uh, I need a second on that first. Second. Okay. Uh, if you would just would take a look at your document, the dates should be um, 
June 5th to June 11th. Oh. I was looking at last year's um, dates. It's June 5th to June 11th. June and that would be changing it also on the letter to uh, Mayor Justin Nichols of Manitowoc, June 5th to June 11th. Um, this is an a annual affair in Sheboygan, and um, it's a part of the uh, task force. We studied it, uh, talked about it, and we would like to have this uh, endorsed by the council again. Thank you, Jean. Um, we have to remember, too, that Mayor Nichols up in Manitowoc is, uh, maybe with the exception of Alderman Decker, is half the age of everybody here in this room. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be quite the challenge. The third of the age of some. Okay, we have, a, uh, we have a, a motion to amend in a second. Um, all in favor of amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed? Document is amended. Um, we, we have a motion to put the amended document upon its passage. I move that the amended document be put upon its passage. Thank you. A motion and a second on the amendment amended document under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. 25-61 by Alderpersons Gisha, Bowers, and Koff, authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Ronald Bear against the city and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Bowers. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Alderman Bowers, could we have a motion to suspend first? Oh, motion to suspend the rules. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Anybody in opposition to suspending the rules? If there is none, rules are suspended. You want me to reiterate what this mm -hmm. is about? This is in regards to a lawsuit brought uh, by uh, a citizen, I believe it's Mr. Uh, Bear. Uh, for, and uh, we in the risk management originally denied it, and apparently the attorney has uh, filed suit against us, so we have to hire an attorney to uh, represent the city of Sheboygan in this matter. Very good. May we have a, uh, a motion to <coughs> put the resolution upon its passage? <coughs> Make motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. 25-62. Everybody make a note please. It will be referred to finance. And city plan. And city planning, that was the other That's one. That's the one. Finance and city planning, 2562. 25-63 by Alder Persons Gisha Heidemann, Kittleson, Boren, and Hannah forming a special budget subcommittee of the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to re review areas of potential savings and efficiencies. President Gisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, if I may, uh, this is uh, an attempt to, uh, to broaden the scope of uh, individuals on the council looking at the budget. Oftentimes it ends up in um, a lot of times finance committee and other committees' hands. So this is, uh, uh, I'm grateful to the aldermen who have accepted uh, this challenge to uh, get some other eyes and help on the process. Very good. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I appreciate this um, resolution as well, or this uh, action, because I think um, the budget time gets too stressful and too tight, and uh, we need to make really well understood and reasoned decisions and not kind of last minute, if that's what happens sometimes. And so I, I, I'm glad this is opening up, and I hope they'll meet uh, often and early. Thank you. And the budget process will be starting this year in May. Right. <laughs> So we will we'll, we'll be ahead of the curve, hopefully, this year. Thank you, Alderperson Clayunas. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, I see that I'm on this committee and with the other members, just because uh, we are on this committee doesn't mean that the other members of the council can't attend and interject new thoughts because we will need uh, everybody in unison on this for the coming year. Thank you, Alderman Bowers, and you are correct. As we all know that uh, uh, all aldermen are welcome to attend all committee meetings. Participation is always welcome. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Um, 2564 through 2568 to be referred. Uh, 2569 by Alderman's, Alderman Sirk and Vu authorizing entering into a dock space agreement with Anglers Avenue LLC. Um, will be heard tonight instead of being referred to the Marina and Harbor Committee. Alderman Vu. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend the rules and a second under discussion. The reason is that the, uh, the Marina and Harbor Committee has agreed to rent a dock to Mr. Russell Gahagan. And that um, rental dock will start in May 1st. So then we don't have enough time for the next council meeting. Very it's good. Um, do we have any opposition to suspending the rules? If there is none, rules are suspended. Maybe we have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, another thing that will go along with that is the, uh, the if you, you have read the uh, contract or the agreement letter, it says that there's no overnight docking. Um, Mr. Russell has requested that uh, he will have a small boat docking overnight and the committee has agreed uh, to accept his re request. A letter will be typed and sent to him to confirm this agreement between the city and him. And so this, I don't know if it will be a separate motion or not, but uh, this will be part of the uh, agreement. Right. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Gahagan does have uh, a small demo boat that is provided by one of his suppliers that he's going to be docking at this dock. Second. Do we have a second on the motion? Do we have a first, second? First, let's get a second on the resolution to be passed. That was it. Right. Okay, That's now we need a motion to make an amendment to the... Uh, no, we're not actually amended. You're uh, not amending no, it. No, that is actually going to go as a separate agreement. Just okay. Between, uh, correct, Attorney McLean? Right. Right. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If there is none, may we have a roll call, please? Thank you, Alderman Vu. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Abstain. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 11 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Report of Committee 625-70 to be referred. Reports of Committee 7, 2571 and 2572 to be referred. Actually, 2572 we pulled forward before. Right. 2571 to be referred in that case. Reports of Committees 8, 25-73 by Public Works recommending directing that various committees' commissions either be merged, eliminated, or reassigned at the end of the current council year, which is April of 2010, and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage, please. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Well, under discussion, um, I hope everyone is read. You know, Public Works Committee will we will eliminate the building use and add those duties to the Public Works Committee, and the Motor Vehicle Review Committee. Those duties will be added to the Public Works Committee as well. Under the Finance Committee, we'll will eliminate. Well, oh, I, I guess Public Works is all I'm concerned about. Currently. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> at least you for the next two weeks. At least for the next two, I, I can continue. Finance <laughs> Committee is eliminating the IS Steering Committee and we're adding those duties to the Finance Committee. We'll be merging the Wellness and Group Health Insurance Committee because there is overlap. Um, and I did, I thought about that, you know, those are two separate issues, but the more I did think about it, I, I think that is a good idea to, to merge those two. Right. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good idea to do that. And then the uh, Sheboygan Board of Housing Appeals and the Sheboygan Commission on Fair Housing Practices, because they have over, overlap, we will merge those as well. Right. Uh, the, reason, the reason for this is there's a lot of committees that uh, the same document gets referred gets to both committees. Right. And it's basically the same people on both committees on a lot of them. So rather than have, you know, to try to cut out some of the redundancy of government, uh, we're eliminating some of these committees. Okay. Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as a friendly amendment, um, some people I've talked with had some difficulty with building use committee being dissolved and put into public works at this time. They can see it in maybe a year from now because uh, building use would be looking at this building, the work that's going to be done in this building, and uh, Public Works has a, gets a huge, huge agenda sometimes, and uh, building use could it focus on this building uh, until the project is finished, the remodeling part. I'm just bringing it up as a friendly amendment. I move to then um, keep the building use committee in, in, in function or uh, open, for this next year until the uh, project in the city hall is completed. And I think the municipal building also is having some work done to keep it open for those two purposes. That's okay, we have a motion and a second to not eliminate the building use committee. Under discussion, President Kisha. Thank you. Uh, as author of this document, I appreciate uh, Alderperson uh, Clayunas' input on that. Uh, we are moving over engineering and moving to the city clerk's office, and she's really excited about that. And uh, thank you for the thumbs up, Sue. And um, uh, the rest uh, obviously can happen, but if I, the amendment would be April of 2011 for that one for building use. Yes, great. Is that, okay, all right. And just to clarify, we do have 58 committees in the city yes. of Sheboygan, and uh, this should eliminate a few, but we've got to look forward to redistricting and potentially smaller councils and things. So we have to really kind of chip that down. This was just kind of the first kick at that cat. Thank you. Thank you, President Gisha. And uh, Sue's right, change is good, right, Sue? Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so we have a motion and a second uh, mm -hmm. on the amendment only. Any further discussion? All those in favor of amending say aye. Aye. Opposed? Document is amended. May we have a motion to pass the document as amended? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to pass the document as amended under discussion. Excuse me, Mayor. Um, Jean, could yes. I have you make the motion as a substitute resolution, I could. not the original resolution? Right. Is that okay? I, yeah, absolutely. Okay, substitute thank you. resolution be put upon its passage. Amended. As amended? As amended. Thank substitute you. resolution as amended. Motion and a second under discussion. If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. Twelve ayes. Motion carries. 2574 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget. Establishing appropriations for purchase of land in the industrial park and establishing appropriation for contribution to the Sheboygan County for business development and passing the attached substitute resolution. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Clayunas. Aye. Montemayor. Vanderweel, Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 9. 5-75 by Public Protection and Safety recommending repealing and recreating Article 6, Division 3 of Chapter 50 of the Municipal Code. So as to update the smoke detector ordinance and require specific types of smoke alarms and pass the attached 
substitute of substitute ordinance. Mayor, um, may I interrupt? Certainly. Okay, we need to have this lie over because I was told by the committee chair that it actually should have come through from the committee as a two to two with no recommendation, so we'll lie it over to the 19th with okay. the new RC saying no recommendation. I can see Chief Herman is excited about that. It will lay over till the 19th. Sorry, Chief. <laughs> and he, he came loaded tonight, too. So, Sorry. I mean, ready to talk. That's what I mean. <laughs> That's what I mean. Sorry about that, Chief. Loaded, loaded for bear, put it that way. Okay, that's what I meant. Yes. <laughs> um, what happened was I received a note saying to pass this substitute of the substitute ordinance. Alderman Hanna said that in the committee meeting, they actually voted two to two. It was a, t and there's no rec. They wanted to do no recommendation at all. So because they, it was a tie vote, you know, it was two so you to have two. To hold this over instead of just saying, by the way, there really wasn't a recommendation. Well, that's, I guess, up to, we normally don't change our seats, but if you want to, I guess, if Steve agrees, we could do it tonight. I mean, it's just a simple typo. It's I mean, it's basically misinformation. Right. It's not just changing the substance of this. And it is only 8 o'clock. Yeah. So, yeah. And the chief is not, <laughs> and the chief is not <laughs> loaded. <laughs> Dulcie's in the room, so please. <laughs> Okay, uh, up, so do we need a, a Attorney McLean, may we get your opinion on that, please? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, it's clear that there, there was no recommendation from the Public Works Committee. Uh, so, uh, you know, as it's worded, it says uh, recommending that the substitute ordinance be passed. Uh, that's apparently uh, just a typo. Uh, I think you've got the resolu the order in front of you. You could certainly act on it tonight. Okay. Do we have to have a motion to that effect or anything, or do we just? Uh, it's understood that it's, it you didn't could, come uh, with a positive recommendation. It came forward. You can no move to file the uh, committee report and pass the right. pass the ordinance. May we have a motion as such? So moved. We have a motion and a second to file the committee report. Who we'll seconded it? Alderman Bowers, did you second that? Yeah. Thank you. To pass the to file the committee report and pass the resolution. Nope. Pass the report. substitute pass of the, the substitute ordinance. The substitute of the substitute ordinance, as I was saying. Yeah, like you said. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second to that effect under discussion. Under discussion, President Kisha. Thank you. Um, after going through all that and asking that we vote on this, I'm not voting for this. <laughs> um, I would just like it to clear it out, and we've been shoving a lot of stuff forward and things we should be dealing with, I think. And uh, I don't. Uh, I think this is a public education issue, a mandate to put certain types of batteries in my hallway, bedroom, kitchen, bathroom is my business. Um, I think the fire department does a great job in education. I think nationally there's a great deal of education that goes out there, goes into our schools. Um, uh, I'm happy with making my own decision on types of batteries I put in an electronic device in my home and where I put them. And uh, for that, I ask that, um, that the council consider, uh, members consider voting against this. Um, and I think there's been a lot of data at the PPNS committee regarding um, uh, really what does this do and not do from a safety standpoint. I think that's mine and my family's decision. Thank you, President Gisha. Next, Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I remember sitting in on the meeting, even though I'm not a member of the committee, and it seems to me the, the, the consensus of the committee was we cannot decide, so please let the council decide. So I think it's good that we're taking this action tonight. And I will support it. I. Uh, Alderman Gish, I agree with you on many things, but I do think this falls in the same category as wearing a seatbelt. And 100 years ago, not spitting on the sidewalk, it was for public health. And I do think my brother-in-law would not be wearing a seatbelt except that it's a law. And I think this may be the case of people doing the safe thing because it's a law. 
Thank you. And I think it's still illegal to spit on sidewalks. Right. <laughs> because of tuberculosis. That was right. the reason. Right. Exactly. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Hanna. Oh, thank you. Uh, as I walked around talking to people, this was a hot topic. They thought, uh, again, they feel education's great, um, but they think this is an expensive mandate requiring the new smoke detectors in every bedroom, so I'm not going to support it. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Next, we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm on this uh, committee, and of course, uh, there, there's been a great divide on this. What we're entrusted to do is for the benefit of the community. Now, if you take people that are interested in city government, there aren't very many. It tested by yesterday's vote. What did we have? 10, 12 percent? 15 percent. 14.7 percent. All right. It was pretty sad. <laughs> Everyone that I talk to says, I changed my batteries. I'm not worried about those people. I'm worried about the ones that don't. And if we pass this law, it's going to be a 10-year battery, and we won't have to worry about it. Because you take uh, people that don't care, when the Christmas comes up and they have toys, they take it right out of there, and they never put them back. So I'm in favor of this, and uh, I would like to see it passed. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Next, Alderman Vu. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question for uh, the installation requirements in letter A, number two. A smoke alarm powered by a non-replaceable, non-removable battery capable of powering the smoke alarm for a minimum of 10 years. What kind of battery that will last 10 years? Uh, actually, this is a, a new type of smoke detector, I believe. It's a whole new unit that would be purchased um, with a, what is it, a lithium battery? <coughs> Yeah, it's a lithium battery as opposed to your regular 9-volt transistor type batteries. These days, uh, lithium batteries will not last 10 years, they last 2 to 3 years. Um, would anybody like to uh, comment on the new type of smoke detector with the 10-year battery? Peace in the house, Alderman Bowers. I just purchased two uh, a couple of weeks ago. They were $15. And in the instructions, it indicates that the battery will last 10, 10 years, and I believe they say it's a lithium battery. And uh, there are some you can put in that you cannot get out. The ones I bought, you cannot get them out if you put in a certain uh, screw. So uh, either way, it's a 10-year battery. So the company sells them as 10-year batteries. So I imagine they would have to last 10 years. So that answers your question, Alderman Blue? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alderman Bowers. Next we have Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd have to go along with what my constituents tell me, and I've gotten more phone calls on this than almost anything I can remember in the last five years or more. I mean, people are against it. They feel it's a nibbling away at their private uh, rights in their homes, and uh, they're very much against it. And uh, they feel that it's just not necessary at this time, and I'm not for it either. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to live 10 years. <laughs> Is that a motion? Thank you, El <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Elder Statesman Wangaman. <laughs> Next, we have Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, if I could ask the chairperson, was there, what was the dialogue around even enforceability of this? Other than if inspectors are coming in at the time of new construction or perhaps of a, a new landlord, but how could we even enforce this? Thank Alderman Hanna, would you like to answer that? There is no means of enforcement except after the fact. Okay. That they've gone into a fire. Right, right. They haven't been there, and then there's a fine. There is, there will be no lithium battery police running around the city. Okay. Uh, as much as you may want because, them to. Well, no, because I think, I think all of all the person Wangaman's uh, constituents <laughs> called my constituents and had them call me too because they don't think it's a very good idea because they're concerned about the lithium battery police. police. <laughs> and my, you know, and when I, I, my dog poops on my neighbor's yard, so he calls and reports me as having ineffective, uh, you know, smoke alarms and to send the police to check it out. So there, there are all kinds of crazy ideas about enforceability. It's unenforceable. Uh, my constituents don't want it, so I'm going to vote against it, too. Thank you. Uh, Chief Herman, would you like to comment on this? <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. And he, he's come loaded for bear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for finishing the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Your Honor. I know this is a very hot topic. Um, it's been discussed, I think, on the council floor once before, I believe in committee twice. Um, this is not a problem that's unique to the city of Sheboygan, the problem with nine volt uh, smoke detectors. It's dated technology. Uh, cities around the state, around the country, are facing this problem. What is unique to Sheboygan is we're being proactive. Uh, we will be, if you would pass this, would be the second city in the state to pass an ordinance uh, similar to this. Uh, there are cities around the country that have gone way beyond this. Uh, I believe Pontiac, Michigan was the most recent one that passed an ordinance saying that every smoke detector needed to be hardwired within a year. Now that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, the best system that we could have. That's currently what the new building code is from 1995 on. That, in my mind, is unreasonable. That would mean that every house in the city of Sheboygan that was built prior to 1995 would need to be hardwired. Which is 99% of them. Correct. And th that's not reasonable in my mind. What we have presented, I believe, is reasonable. The stronger the ordinance that you put on the books, the better chance that we have of saving lives. I believe that we put forth the most reasonable cost-effective ordinance that we could. We've given five years for the people to comply with it. There is no means for enforcement. There currently is not now. We are not able to get into single and two-family homes to enforce the ordinance. The only time that we get in there is when they have a fire or some type of other occurrence in their home and we get in and do an inspection. We do not cite people. We assist them in bringing their property up to code. Whether we spell out the means that they need to do it and, and show them where they need to place their smoke detectors. In some instances, if they're not financially able to do it, we will put detectors in for them. We have programs where we have uh, donations given to the department and we have detectors on hand and we put them in for the people. We plan on expanding that program if this is passed. I know that one of the, the problems that people have with the new ordinance is requiring smoke detectors to be put in each bedroom. That was written in there to mirror the new building code. That is the same as what is in the building code now. Uh, when we are in school programs teaching the children now, we teach them to, to sleep with the doors closed. If you would walk through that apartment building on 25th and Calumet Drive and look at the apartments where the doors were closed versus the apartments where the doors were open, you'll see the difference in the damage that are in those apartments. That's the reason that we teach people to sleep with their bedroom doors closed, to protect themselves, to separate themselves from a fire. That's one of the reasons that it's important to have a smoke detector inside the bedroom because we're asking you to sleep with the bedroom door closed. You separated yourself. And the other reason is the second most common place for a fire to occur in the home is in the bedroom. So be it candles, smoking, um, auxiliary heating equipment, whatever. That is the second leading cause of fires in the bedroom. So that's the other reason um, that it is important that smoke detectors are placed in bedrooms. So I would encourage you to pass the ordinance as it's written. As I said before, the stronger the ordinance, the better chance we have to save lives. Thank you, Chief. Well spoken. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Chief, if you could uh, tell us uh, on the, uh, the building at 20, is that 29th Street or 25th? 25th. 25th. Uh, how many of those apartments did have smoke alarms that were operable? You'd have any idea uh, I, I couldn't tell you. That's a little bit of a different system because it is a, an apartment building that has more than two uh, apartments. They are required to have an interconnected, <laughs> hardwired system. Oh, but okay. inside the apartments, uh, those, if this ordinance would be passed, those detectors would then have to be 10-year uh, lithium detectors inside the apartments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman Vu? I have a question, probably this question is for um, Chief Herman. Uh, just, hang out for a while there, Chief. I just like to know if uh, most fires, as you probably know, that cause of, because there were lack of enough uh, smoke detectors, the homeowner were there because they did not have batteries and were there reasons for the other fires? 
Well, the reason for the fire uh, doesn't have anything to do with the smoke detector, but the problems that we're seeing with the 9-volt detectors, uh, it's kind of half and half. The, a lot of them are 20 to 25 years old, and they're just not working anymore. But the majority of them are people are taking the batteries out for whatever reason uh, and not putting them back in. And one of the, the features of the 10-year lithium batteries are that they have a silence button on them. So if you do burn a pizza or you burn toast in your house, you push the silence button and it silences the alarm for 15 minutes and then it's active again. Versus backing out that battery and forgetting about it, or as one of the aldermen said, taking it out to put it in a toy because the battery's dead, uh, that does not happen with these lithium detectors, which um, should solve a lot of our problems. Thank you, Alderman Vu. President Kisha. Not for you, Chief. Sorry, <laughs> I knew you'd be looking forward to getting back. Uh, I just want to make it clear that uh, I, and I'm sure every member of the council uh, who votes yay or nay on this, is not, is not opposed to this new technology. I think we're opposed to mandating the new technology. Um, just like when the old system came out with 9-volt batteries, that was revolutionary. <clears throat> and uh, soon that was the only ones you could buy. I assume within five years the only the only smoke detectors you can probably buy are those with the lithium, but that's my decision for me and my family. Uh, I also wanted to mention that I don't think the fire department did this for some crazy conspiratorial reason that uh, to to be busy or to do that. I think their their heart is in the right place, and they and they really uh, felt it was the right thing to do, and with the trends they're seeing around, uh, I think it's misplaced to mandate something we can't enforce. It's a waste of our time and, and manpower and limited resources. So you're saying the chief is not a major investor in lithium battery companies? or uh, We'll be looking into companies. that later, but I assume not. Yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, President Kisha. He's not happy back there. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down, Dulce. <laughs> And that was a joke, Chief, so don't take it to heart. Um, okay, any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Okay. Everybody know what they're voting on? Wait. Chief is... Uh, Chief Herman. I left the mic on figuring you might come back on. <laughs> You're turning a bit red, Chief. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Uh, I, I guess before you vote, uh, rather than seeing you vote this down, uh, if, if that's your intention, and I, that, I'm, that's the feeling that I'm getting, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but I would throw this out there that, if, to give you another option, that if the bedrooms are the problem, and I truly believe that they're very important, but that you would consider amending it to take the bedrooms out and in that place, uh, insert a sentence that says you need a detector within six feet of the doorway of each sleeping room, which is what the current uh, smoke detector code is right now. So what you would really be doing is replacing all 9-volt smoke detectors with 10-year lithium detectors, if you would amend it to that. Within five years. Correct. Do we have a... Motion on that amendment. Would anybody like to? I would make that amendment second. We have a motion and a second on the amendment. Now discussion will be on the amendment only. On the amendment only. I think that requiring the lithium batteries within, what did you say, five, five? Six feet. Within six feet. And, and I think that that would be a good, uh, a good compromise to this. Where yeah. is that in your ordinance that you showed me? It's got one, two places. OK, thank you, Alder Person Kittleson. Mm -hmm. Alderman Bowers, uh, now this is a discussion on the amendment only. Alderman Bowers. Yes, well, if, if, if there has to be a compromise, I would go along with that. The operative word here is the 10-year lithium battery, and it has to be replaced uh, when the old ones wear out. As people have said, we don't have uh, police running around checking batteries. But I think the chief has said before, the only fatal fires that we've had in the city of Sheboygan in the last 10, 15 years have been places that did not have batteries in their fire alarms. Now, this, what this will do, we're not protecting the people that are complaining to us because we know that these people put their batteries in, they don't take them out. We have to protect those that don't protect themselves and their children. 
So if we have to go along with the compromise, I will back that. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. President Kisha. Uh, thank you. The same people who perhaps Alderman Bowers wants to protect won't go out and buy 10-year batteries if they aren't putting in a 9-volt battery in the current one they have because of an ordinance you can't enforce. So I, I am not in favor of the uh, amendment because it doesn't change the basic practice that there's, it's, 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 it's good advice, but it's hot air. That, and hot air can't be, uh, can't be gobbled up here in our hands. We can't enforce it. We can't do anything with it. And I think it's, uh, therefore, wonderful education. And I think that's where it needs to stand. Thank you, President Gisha. Discussion on the amendment only. Any further discussion? Your Honor, if I could address uh, Alderman Gisha's concerns. Certainly. Um, I would say that the majority of the properties that we're seeing the problems in are two-family residences, uh, rental residences, where they would, the landlord would now be required to install a lithium detector so the tenant could not tamper with that detector. Question follow-up? President Kisha? Thank you, Chief. Uh, even if the tenant takes the battery, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of how these rules work, is it not still the landlord's requirement to make sure that there's a working battery in that, uh, whether it's a 9 volt, 12 volt, or whatever? No, once the tenant moves in and signs the lease and sends, signs the landlord-tenant agreement for the smoke detector, it is the tenant's responsibility to maintain the detector once he moves in. Uh, I would think maybe a, a, a better compromise rather than the bedroom thing, if that's the main issue is what you're seeing the most of, is address that through ordinance changes and, uh, and tenant laws in the city, so, or uh, landlord regulations, uh, tightening up those restrictions if that's where it is, and, uh, because that's a commercial operation. My issue is my house, is my house. And uh, I think uh, uh, I would encourage the council to vote down the amendment and vote down the resolution uh, the ordinance rather, and then go back uh, with an ordinance addressing the specific problem you mentioned and make it uh, a landlord issue. That's a commercial operation, uh, and I think if there is no requirement, we can make one. Make them put the tenure in. I don't think anybody would have an issue with that. Thank you. Thank you, President Kisha. Any discussion on the amendment only? If there is none on the amendment only, may we have a roll call vote, please? Okay, everybody know what the amendment is? I will try. Um, it's in section 50-664 under B. It would say now, smoke alarms required in A shall be installed and maintained in the basement on each floor level and within six feet of the doorway? The doorway to the sleeping area. And it would also do the same, it would replace that, put that sentence in in C also. and within six feet of the doorway of each sleeping area. And it would take out in both paragraphs and in each bedroom. Are we all clear on the amendment? Okay. Okay, if we are, roll call please. Vanderweel. No. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Bauk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. <coughs> Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Five ayes, seven noes. Motion fails. On the amendment. On the amendment. Um, now under discussion <coughs> on the original document. Any further discussion? If there is none on the unamended document, roll call please. Vu? No. Wangaman? No. Balk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Um, two ayes. 10 no's. Motion fails. Okay, where were we here? That was uh, 2575? Yep. 2576, by salaries and grievances, recommending amending the municipal code 
to amend the minimum education experience requirements for the position of fire chief for the city of Sheboygan. Vice President Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I put the uh, make a motion to accept and adopt the RC and pass the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Okay. This was discussed at salary and grievances. We all agreed uh, that we should change the requirements or the, the, um, for the fire chief to have a bachelor's degree uh, in fire science. Um, emergency management, uh, public or business administration, and uh, also included a master's degree in uh, public administration or a related field. With 15 years of experience in fighting, fighting, in firefighting, emergency medical, and at least five years of management. And that passed unanimously. Thank you, Vice President Heideman. Under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Wangaman? Aye. Boak? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Vu? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10. 2577 lies over. Um, 2578 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 2337 will be referred to the Public Works Committee of the New Common Council. 2453, RO number 453-09-10 by the City Clerk submitting communication from Library Board President stating that they appreciate the recent actions by the Council and its Finance Committee to amend the 2010 budget in order to meet the maintenance of effort funding requirement. Excuse me, requirement for 2010. Motion to accept and file. We have a motion to accept and file. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 2451, General Ordinance Number 58-09-10 by Alder Persons, Heidemann, Bout, Gisha, and Koth, reestablishing the salary schedule for certain designated elected officials, namely the City Attorney and City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. I motion uh, to pass the ordinance. Okay. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Okay, again, this is, this is an ordinance that will set the salaries for the city clerk and the city attorney for the next, within the next four, for the next four years. Will be for the next term of. Next term, yeah. Yes. Okay, under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? No. And Wangaman? Aye. 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. 25-79. A resolution by Alderman, Alderpersons Heideman, Kittleson, Gisha, and Koth lifting the hiring freeze in order to recall from layoff the housing slash environmental inspector in the Department of Planning and Development. Vice President Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first aid, a motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Under discussion on the suspension? There is no discussion. If, uh, is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? If there is none, the rules are suspended. Okay, then I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Okay, basically with this, we're lifting the hiring freeze in order to uh, rehire a person who's been laid off uh, for, uh, under, um, the, for the building inspection. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Yeah. Vice President Heideman, uh, if I may add, we, did have, we do have a retirement in the inspection department, in the Department of Building Inspection. That's why we're bringing one person back from layoff. Yes, Thank you, Alderman Hanna. President Gisha. Uh, just a quick financial note. I want to thank uh, the uh, various uh, department heads and so forth for getting these financial information forms on everything. Also known as the Fife. Also known as the Fife. And it, uh, it, it talks about whether this is going to increase the budget or not. Uh, and is it a budgeted item? It is a budgeted item, but it's actually going to decrease the department's budget. We save about $20,000 uh, because of the difference between the, one, the gentleman we're bringing back and the gentleman who has been, uh, uh, who is retiring. Thank you, President Gisha. Under further discussion, Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Bowers, oh, go ahead. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, a lot of people have called me on this one. One thing that I've noticed a definite, uh, well, how should I say this, in our neighborhoods of, of uh, run-down properties that is not being taken care of. So what we're doing is we're going to replace it one with the other, but we're back. And I'm getting a lot of phone calls, and I tell them I'm, I'm at a loss. We can't do anything. Do we have any money in this budget? I think we had $120,000 somewhere that was left over. Could we add one more, uh, Inspector? Um, that would have to be something that would come through committee, obviously. Committee? Um, you know, if, you, if you would like to make a resolution to that effect, you are more than welcome to. Right. Uh, to present to the new council. Right. Uh, one thing I can add is uh, there is a, a new uh, spirit of cooperation between our police department and our building inspection and our planning department uh, with trying to get into some of these properties and inspect them and bring them up to code. So we are making uh, forward progress on this. Um, however, it is going to take some time. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. President Kisha. Thanks, and that's worth noting. I, I don't want to note exactly, although it's public knowledge, it was in the committee, there's no secret uh, as to what they're going to do, but it's basically uh, uh, the police department has teamed up with our inspection department and with the uh, fire department to some extent, I believe, um, and uh, in engineering to, to do basically a carpet bombing of a specific, I think it's the NARSA area, um, areas of non-attainment where there happens to be a lot of violations, and that might be an answer somewhat to Alder Person Bauer's question. Before we just kind of picked away all over the place. Here we're gonna have an intense effort. It's like when you have a siding salesperson group come into an area or, or selling um, magazines and they send everybody to every door, all these neighbor and, and, uh, and, and go for it and, and do a lot of work in a very limited period of time and limited in scope. I think it's being tested with this. This is one of the reasons we want to bring this gentleman back or fill this position. And then we can try it in another area and then another area. Another, I think it was a great response by uh, Director Enders and uh, Chief Domogolski and uh, Fire Chief uh, Herman and the rest putting this, all this together. Thank you, President Kishi. Yeah, if, I, if I may add, I mean, we've always talked about getting uh, cross-cooperation cross between our departments and get them working together, and this is a good example of it happening. So, thank you. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters. I'm losing my place here. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2580 is an <coughs> RO by the fire chief pursuant to section 50-494 of the municipal code. He's uh, submitting his quarterly report for the period commencing January 1, 2009 and ending December 31, 2009. That will go to the Public Protection and Safety Committee of the new Common Council. 2581 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Quality State Oil Company requesting an encroachment for maintaining a sign at their new location for a Q-Mart store at 1211 Weedon Creek Road. That will go to city planning. 2582 is the ordinance granting Quality State Oil Company the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Weedon Creek Road located at 1211 Weedon Creek Road in the city for the purpose of maintaining a sign. That will go to city planning. 2583 is an RO by the city clerk submitting as a matter of record Information received from Carol Lutz regarding the dates for Rockets for Schools as being May 6, 7, and 8, 2010. That will go, to, oh, that lies over, excuse me. 2584 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Bowers requesting to add a farmer's market at the South Pier District with dates and hours to be determined by vendors and the city of Sheboygan. That will go to the Redevelopment Authority. 2585 is a resolution authorizing entering into contract with the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce for tourism promotion and development services and dissolving the city's tourism advisory committee. That will go to finance. 2586 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. That will go to law and licensing. 2587 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a notice of injury in the matter of Amanda J. McKetrick and the Sheboygan Transit System for alleged injuries while alighting from a bus operated by Sheboygan Transit bus driver on the
A Street and Georgia Avenue. Will be referred to risk management. 2588 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting an appeal to the sex offender residency restrictions on behalf of state inmate Jason Alfonsi. That will go to the Public Protection and Safety Committee of the new Common Council. 2589 is a resolution authorizing executing an agreement with ACOM Technical Services, Inc. to provide consultant engineering services relating to infrastructure upgrade of sidewalk gap filling. That lies over. And that is all we have. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Uh, President Gisha, would you like to speak first? J just uh, before, uh, I know there's a few aldermen missing tonight, just so people don't maybe get the wrong impression. We normally, of course, meet on Monday night. There was a Citizens Academy, Police Academy tonight, and a lot of the aldermen signed up for that. And I believe tonight is like graduation night. I don't know if they get the tassel moved or whatever it is they do. <laughs> get to use the 45. I'm not sure what it is. but Nine uh, millimeter. Nine millimeter. I, so that's the reason some of the aldermen were in absence on kind of an odd night for council. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, President Gish. A motion to adjourn in a second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>